Hello and welcome to IGPP Expert Talks. I am Hina Goswami, Editorial Consultant with IGPP, Institute for Governance, Policies and Politics, New Delhi. On 15th April this year, an armed conflict broke out between two rival factions of the military government in Sudan, triggering a humanitarian crisis that forced many foreign governments, including India, to evacuate its citizens from the troubled nation. To understand this crisis in Sudan, its history, causes and implications, we have with us Dr. Sandeep Nidash. Dr. Sandeep Nidash teaches at the Department of African Studies, University of Delhi. An expert on African affairs and India's policy towards Africa, he has written several articles on Sudan's diplomacy and its relations with India. Welcome to IGPP Expert Talks. Sir. So what is happening in Sudan? What has precipitated the current crisis and who are the major players? I think if, uh, if you are wanting uh, 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 you to uh, uh, you know, tell you about uh, uh, where exactly this uh, problem started, uh, I would go beyond uh, that uh, this year's 15th April, which we uh, see today is uh, like Amu versus that militia or the parliamentary government rapid, uh, you know, kind of uh, somewhat force. Uh, so, but uh, the precipitations lies uh, from 2019 when uh, you have got that existing government, but you know, um, uh, uh, that uh, fellow uh, called uh, Omar, and he was, you know, uh, and the, the military coup and he was thrown out and then uh, uh, military is uh, unusual uh, they came into civilian mode then all of a sudden you have got uh, you know from mid uh, april you have got two you know uh, i mean you get uh, uniforms uh, of the two groups like you know, one is army and what what they call it as a Paramilitary, militia, both are in uniform, fatty uniforms. So I think this 2019 is, uh, for me, it's a, like immediate precipitations, but there are quite a long, deeper, and also past uh, reasons for that uh, explain why we see this kind of uh, overthrown complex uh, in Sudan. So, uh Sudan bears a lot of uh, geostrategic significance and ever since its independence in 1956 it, there have been three civil wars and six attempts at coup. So why is that Sudan is so prone to civil wars and armed conflict? Uh, Sudan, Sudan is not the only, uh, only, only case where you uh, find the, you know, you kind of a number that are like, you know, uh, three, uh, you know, kind of civil wars and multiple numbers of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, military schools. Cool. Uh, but I must tell you, these, these are very special conflict theaters, be it Sudan, be it Libya, or this is Zimbabwe. These are like, basically, these governments and states, they have that they carry over their position right from their independence, uh, not as a you know kind of what you uh, they uh, 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 they uh, they're amenable for uh, West supremacy. Whatever West says and they will accept. It's not like that. They uh, they have their own uh, no way of uh, looking at their own interests and also West. And this is uh, the reason why. Uh, uh, these, you know, kind of uh, cases where you see uh, that they are, you know, the conflicts is overblown and specific to Sudan, specific to Sudan. Now, after 1956, you have got, you got independence, then you have got this geostrategic importance of, basically, they got independence from Anglo-Egyptian powers. And then you have got, you know, 50s and there's a time of the Cold War, Americans versus Russians, and then we have a second phase of Cold War. There were Chinese, uh, no, uh, Russians, uh, then, uh, then, uh, then the rift between Russians and Chinese, and the, the Chinese side with the Americans. 
So all this, what happens? You have got regimes after regimes. There's a, a lot of geostrategic, you know, kind of uh, 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 engagement and interference. And Sudanese states start and headed by right from 70s, I can say, Niamis, then Turabi, then Umar, and now you have got these military guys. So, and then on, on this process, you have got you know, frequent military coups, as you said, uh, and frequent uh, six military coups and three civil wars. And Sudan is a case where it's a geostrategic importance, yes, it is geostrategic important because uh, it is a Red Sea uh, exposure. Uh, at the same time, also, the demography is also it's an Afro Arab, Afro Arab, and also coexistence of Christianity and uh, Islam. And this Afro Arab, and this region has is susceptible for you know imperial geostrategic and external manipulation and interference. And this state and this bit uh, uh, you know kind of uh, all these governments, all these governments, they uh, the way uh, Western powers are act is you know smartly they wanted to you know kind of act. They also, I mean, this Sudanese government also try to, you know, kind of uh, try to outsmart them. So, the, when outsmarting the Sudanese governments, I mean, uh, one regime after others, and these, you know, external actors, they also try to outsmart them. So there you find these numbers like three military, you know, kind of, uh, I mean, three, uh, uh, you know, civil wars and the conflicts. Because you have got outside, uh, you have issue of Saudia was introduced, and then here you have got a, in southern Sudan you have got Christianity plus animist, and then one reason also you have got this strategic resources, resource fields. It is you all of a sudden you find that Sudan is all rich. Mm -hmm. You have got Hegelic region in mid Sudan, and some other the western and also southern Sudan. And then you have got seven sister oil companies like servants, they move forward and they try to try to uh, you know and explore explore them and all. And then uh, all, all of a sudden you find that uh, you know uh, that Sharia law has been uh, you, know, uh, you know imposed in that region. And then this got uh, and then uh, you have got a uh, north versus south and you have SPLA, the Sudanese People's Liberation Army has formed and they protested against the Sudanese government and then you have got civil war has uh, come up and then these severance uh, has just le left that place halfway because at the throw away price I had an opportunity to meet uh, you know and late uh, uh, you know uh, energy minister so this is, is my uh, field work, field study to, uh, in uh, into Sudan Khatoum and um, Omdurman which is now the very epicenter of the conflicts and there, uh, he told me that the, the Americans and Serbians, they, they thought that the Sudan doesn't have an expertise on to carry out their, you know, all explorations. So they will again come back to us. But that is their, you know, th that assumption went wrong. And these guys uh, went ahead with the, with the emerging Asian powers and they went ahead with their all expression exercises. So again, now, I mean, 2005, you have got Sudan and South Sudan was ripped apart, you thought it would be peaceful Sudan because you have got all the source South Sudan so that it would be peaceful so that you can Westerns and other powers they can easily extract oils and all but you have got the oil complex in South Sudan like again you have got further you know inter-tribal and inter-ethnic wars now in Sudan here also you have got military versus parliamentary so where do you stop? so it's a very Embedded chronic and structural conflict externally induced, and that is the region why you see this throughout. From the, I said, I rightly said, from 1956 it got independent, but you have got uh, you know a number of civil wars and conflicts. But because it is a completely you know, what do you say, the fault lines are very sharp. And then the extra regional powers, interference and manipulations is constant and sometimes brutal.
and that is the reason why it is you know uh, uh, you have this kind of things uh, I mean, uh, disturbances and conflicts and all and so that is to be specific these students in government they have they are not you know kind of compliable that is the problem the khatun is never he was never compliable to the west so as you mentioned that a lot of conflicts are externally induced in the current crisis mm. like we hear from the newspaper reports that uh, uh, russia wants a foothold in the red sea trade how are the other major international players like usa saudi arabia how are they placed like who are they supporting who what key players are they supporting and what does the civil war mean for the whole international community i i think i would like to uh, respond to another questions why i'm trying to understand your questions of the that okay. russians are on the uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get a foot on who is saying russians are there hmm. yeah. i mean western media hmm. and uh, who are the mediating this conflict i mean uh, mediating to end the conflict americans and south arabia in jail hmm. hmm. american and south arabia insert uh, after the 15th uh, you know uh, after mid april of this uh, conflict the uh, number of cease fires and has failed But who are these uh, six pair, uh, you know, mediators? Americans and Saudi Arabia. Who are who are they mediating? They are mediating because they they want to have a complete foothold of over Sudan. Because South, because South, I mean, capture, I mean, bringing South Sudan under influence uh, is not enough. You have got the outlets. Red Sea region is on this side, so you need a po- politically compliable governments, and this is the region why you have only it is projected as a intra-state conflicts in terms of uh, you know uh, an army versus uh, this rapid uh, uh, you know uh, you know rapid support forces is paramilitary or militia by uh, uh, Omar, I mean who was thrown out in two thousand nineteen. But it is a. But why they are not interfering, capturing? Because they are not allowed to do it. After Libya, mm-hmm. you have got conflict theaters like Syria, and now the uh, Ukraine is on it. So everywhere they want the the moment they overstep and get into a place like Sudan, which has got a history of Russians, Chinese, Americans. Uh, I mean, uh, the constant, you know, kind of their uh, interference and engagement. The moment they will, you know, put their, you know, kind of direct interventions, then they will invite counter interventions from Russians. Mm-hmm. And that is why it is, you know, projected as it's a conflict simmering or is happening between this army and rapid suction forces, and we are mediating Americans and Saudi Arabians. But it is not; they are not mediating. Actually, it is a it, it, that you are legitimate. You are you are you are you know obs- you know obscuring or you are you know kind of you know kind of avoiding the public time uh, public attention, global public attention from the root of the problem. It is a completely West-driven conflict because you you know precipitated. these military coups by throwing out omar be and you wanted him to be get arrested that as to icc warrant in south africa we didn't do it mm-hmm. and and then and if you are mediating then why are you not bringing the the real stakeholders of this peace then the african union true which is a regional actors hmm. for you african union is not regional actor for you in arab league the way you brought arab league into You know, kind of Libya. You, you didn't bring it here, but you were mediating. Mm-hmm. So it's fine. I mean, if Russians will come, or for anybody who will come, and this is the reason why uh, you are putting it as an interstate conflict. But it is not interstate. It's a. It's. I would say it is a complex. You know, kind of intertwined linkages between in, in, interest uh, interstate conflict plus. Plus the external, you know, kind of strategic interest. 
so one of the ma- major players in the whole conflict has been the rapid support force and rapid support force is the paramilitary that is fighting against the sudan sudanese army it was initially a mil- militia that was established by umar umar al bashir the former ruler we say, see that in lot of other uh, african nations as well like be it somalia uganda angola cameroon or others there's a preponderance of these militia these uh, extra constitutional armies why is that so it is because uh, look one has to uh, look at uh, these contemporary african history the contemporary african history is that african countries get in, 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 get independence from 50s onwards in phases 50s 60s much of 70s even south africa uh, your apartheid government was you know kind of replaced by more uh, this uh, i mean democratic government in uh, you know mid 90s 1994 and so the point is after this government those african uh, african countries they got independence you have a lot of aspirations for the democratic governance but that democratic experiment was throttled Threatened by constant support by the competing colonial, uh, you know, Cold War, uh, you know, Cold War uh, superpowers to instigate the military journals and these autocratic people, and they said, look, these people came for democracy, but they are not able to give you food, shelters, and everything. How could they give? Your countries are so pauperized by the colonial powers, and all of a sudden you. you they, they, they became independent in the 50s, some in the 60s and 70s. So you have got the least resources with them to organize this government. You should have given them time, but you didn't give them. They all this, they said, the Cold War time superpowers, they constantly, for their own strategic interests, they promoted these militaries, right? And this, you know, and they, uh, the, 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 then after the Cold War is over, Cold War is over, then these, when the superpowers rivalry was gone, so all of these you know, ethnic lines, whatever these or uh, ethnic groups, uh, they they became militarized. So it's a militarized because all of, um, even prior to Cold War, the the modern state you see, you must know a lot of these borders, they're straight lines. Straight lines. Africa, uh, how can you have a border, a interstate borders like, uh, like straight lines? Because they are from 1885, they are drawn by the external powers, like the uh, Army German, uh, the Berlin Conference, right? And then, and the, then you get a lot of ethnic groups, they are coexist, sometimes, uh, um, I mean, willingly, sometimes forcefully. And, and these governments, and all of a sudden you said, okay, you go on for democracy and everything, and, uh, and democracy of own, uh, our own type, and if you, if you deviate from their own agenda, uh, then uh, you, 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 uh, you, uh, you, all of a sudden you engineered coups, or you supported the military people. So the, all factions, they have got ethnical, ethnical fault lines with uh, their own, uh, and they get militarized. So you have got a lot of uh, these, uh, uh, I mean, uh, militias are there, and you, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you know, outstate that uh, Omar al Bashir, and this is his militias who are basically, uh, what do you say? They are, they call this Darfur and other things. They are the warring faction section. You have a, another, you know, lively dimension of Sudan also. Mm-hmm. Not only north and north and south on the division on the ethnic lines and also religious lines, but on the livelihood lines as well, because the southern part was agrarian. Mm-hmm. They settle and they you know uh, do their you know uh, you know do the undertake the agricultural productions. And the northern sides the more are more pastorals, cattle rearing, and you know uh, season wise you orders. Hmm. So that is all the So instead of having you know kind of symbiotic linkages between southern agriculturalists and northern you know kind of cattle yes. uh, you know rearers, you have you you know kind of created a conflict among them. And that I mean conflict you said that conflict was because of the absence of a very proper governance and the external powers constant encouragement for these countries to go on.
to the extent you can divide them because northern khartoum is not compliable to you west so in the name of democracy and in the name name of you know kind of conflict and all you divide it you said there will be peace uh, the peace but 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 whatever little peace was there prior to 2005 uh, prior to division of sudan and south sudan that conflict has they call you know kind of what do you call in all sides mid sudan called abey hmm. this sudan this northern part of the sudan by this now you see this army versus uh, rapid uh, rapid support forces you got paramilitary you got ethnic militia or whatever you call it and in south sudan you have got uh, dilka and other tribes competing tribes they are also armed groups so it both are fought together with the encouragement of the west against the khartoums and you have uh, these border fan regions and dodafo regions again these uh, these uh, these players are active there Another cause of concern that has repeatedly cropped up in this discussion related to the Sudanese civil war is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. So what is the controversy related to this dam and can this current crisis complicate the uh, dispute over the dam? Uh, yeah, it's obvious that because uh, Sudan is a uh, very, you know, uh, crucial uh, stakeholder of this dam because egypt and sudan both are in the lower equatorial regions and uh, relatively on, on the higher latitude is uh, ethiopia is uh, part of this nile river so they have a major concern of it but somehow uh, in between the sudanese governments and uh, this uh, uh, i mean uh, egypt's government they uh, negotiated with the ethiopians and uh, they will say we will have a you know kind of tripartite and you know kind of uh, what do you say collective uh, efforts so that all three stakeholders will get benefited out of hmm. uh, these dams and this uh, you know kind of positive impact of agriculture that's then but now what happens uh, again uh, but this has happened after this you know 2019 when uh, this uh, Omar uh, Omar was you know kind of thrown out, True. and then again you have got a this Omar's uh, you know kind of group, and then your army they are fighting. So uh, what happens that then every chance that uh, till that things don't get settled, uh, then it will be very difficult on the part of the Sudan, Sudanese government to uh, the the recent positions of going with the dam. Hmm. Will they able to go with it or not? That's a problem. I think this is a it's a quite obvious and it's a usual impact of any big crisis, conflicts, whatever ongoing, you know, development projects uh, get stopped, hmm. and so is the uh, this time hmm. because of this, you know, hmm. uh, all of a sudden recently and there's an outgoing conflict. This is also a time when India is holding the G20 presidency, and one of the agendas for India has been to bridge the global south. So, do you think the civil war in Sudan and its spillover effects can hamper the process of bridging the global south, or have some direct consequences for India? No, I don't uh, see that because because the global south or this G20 G20 is a very important grouping and. Uh, and that too, because we have more, more traditional land emerging actors uh, together than acting for, and this global south is a main agenda. And South Africa and India are the actors, and South Africa and in India both are very important stakeholders uh, in Sudan and also the Africa, especially in the African Union. And I must tell you that there are three things for one has to, you know, uh, one I have already mentioned that who was mediating like. Apparently, the Americans and Saudi Arabia is mediating, but are two other developments also. African Union two days before, we have got that Africa Peace Fund uh, resolution that set up and they have got guidelines that two cases, the owning of their own African security expenditures, hmm. and first case is Sudan. So that shows uh, how this global South thinking, and uh, they will own up their own expenditures, and. And and after after long uh, overdue efforts, they know where problem lies and they are responding to it. And and also Sudan is a country where apart from Russians, 
Sudan is a country also they and like Iran's uh, in, in, uh, no, they have also their uh, they have a planning for this currency swapping hmm. direct you know kind of uh, currency swap instead of mediating through the American or anything so in that way uh, so this uh, this on you know coexistence of this externally precipitated conflicts and constant process of this global south or these you know kind of uh, countries who are recipient of the problems but not the uh, not the creators of the problems they constantly try to address their issues so it's not new and it's not i don't see it. rather rather the, the india's positioning in terms of first is evacuation of his own setting it successfully and then whatever i mean now whatever conflict containment uh, you know kind of endeavors from the regional fronts or from road fronts going india is actively participating to the extent of sacrificing his own uh, you know kind of soldiers and through un un african indian humanitarian Indian missions and then best uses for them and after all not being identified as a part of the problems or perhaps doesn't see any problem you know doesn't uh, deter from uh, india or for that matter other uh, co-partners uh, you know uh, in the india's presidency in the g20 for the global south moving forward like is there a hope for ending the crisis anytime soon and how can an effective peace deal be brokered i think this this uh, this conflict uh, you know, thing is you are what uh, all stakeholders uh, should have were genuine uh, you know kind of uh, uh, genuine response to it uh, when i say genuine response in the sense if if you serious about ending the conflicts and who is trying to negotiate that conflict and i see the silver lining again that african union that we spawned there. The two cases they have taken. One is this current crisis in Sudan and also the Somalia. Hmm. And these are very chronic, you know, embedded conflicts and they have got a very you know, obvious uh, and uh, external angle to it. And there, African Union is owning up its own responses. And you have got emerging powers like South Africa, India, and so many, uh, so, many so forth powers who are there to back it up. So, African Union and uh, you know, EGAD or whatever, you have got regional actors, they're serious, and then you have got emerging powers and G20. Uh, and, uh, I don't see these uh, problems should, will you know, kind of go longer, and it, it has to stop. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. My